Today I'm going to talk about a camera that I bought back in about 1979 when I was a 15 year old getting really into photography. I had a, um, an enlarged uh, for black and white prints and unfortunately it was a very elderly gnome enlarger and it would only take um, 6x6 or 6x9 um, negatives. It didn't have a lens for 35mm and 35mm would struggle in an enlarger like that. So when I was looking for a camera which had focusing and would take reasonable images, I realised I was slightly limited and back in the 70s cameras were expensive things and we had several, we had three camera shops at that stage in Dorchester in my local town and there was this particular camera shop called Dorchester Studios owned by Mr McGilly and I would spend a long time in there looking at cameras and he was very patient and I remember looking at this uh, single, not single lens, sorry, this twin lens reflex. So it was like the row reflex in style, but obviously not a row reflex, and it was the grand price of £15. And I bought this thing, and this is what I bought. It had on its label Retzoflex, and I, when I initially bought it, assumed because of the round crown at the top and there was something about the camera, I assumed it was Japanese and it takes 120 film. It has a manual aperture, obviously manual shutter speeds, which are from one second to three hundredth of a second. The apertures are from 3.5, so that's moderately fast for a camera of this design to f22. It's a twin lens reflex so we look through here that's our viewing lens that's our taking lens it has a lunar I hadn't heard of a lunar lens but it has a lunar 80 mil lens focusing like this and to use you basically obviously you focus and then you set your um, shutter speed so I'm going to set this to a hundred of a second and then you will set this according to um, a light meter or the sunny 16 rule. So if it's sunny it's 16 and you have to set the shutter here and then take and then wind on. It's a bit sticky this shutter now but it's a long time since I've really used this camera. But at the time I did use it a lot and in a moment we are going to look at some images. But before we look at the images from this camera, a little bit more about its, its history because as I got into photography I realised they were, you know, the camera to really go for was a roll reflex but they were expensive. But I couldn't find much about this camera. And I belong to something called the Photographic Collectors Club. And someone in there said, oh, I think I've seen that in McKeon's. Now McKeon's is like the Bible of old cameras. It lists hundreds of millions of cameras in there. And true enough, there's a page which says Retzoflex circa 1955, six by six TLR. And that comes under a um, company called the Retz Magazine camera, car, um, camera Company of um, Chicago. So at that point someone said oh it's an American camera and because it was in McKeon's at that point I thought this is an American camera. I thought it was but somehow it didn't feel right. I wondered if it was the sort of similar to what we made for Sears, the department store in the States, just didn't look very American. It's fascinating how countries do have a certain look with cameras. A French camera from the 50s has great style, Japanese cameras incredibly well made, American cameras great character but quite chunky. This seemed not to fit the bill. So that got me really thinking and this is where the internet actually was really useful. 
I say useful, when I put retroflex I got nothing. I got absolutely, or very, very little. Then I thought we've got to go a bit deeper here. So I put in rectus, which is the shutter. And as soon as I put in rectus, sorry, rectus, I got a Wikipedia and it told me that this was a leaf shutter found on some Japanese cameras from the 1950s. And there was a camera called a, Price, a Prince Junior. Um, and when I looked into things deeper, I found a photograph of a Prince Junior. And apart from the plate, the camera is exactly the same. So it turns out that it is not an American company, that it is actually, as I first thought, back in 1979, it is actually a Japanese camera. So, conclusion, Japanese camera. However, how does it work? Well, I looked out some of my old images and I'll just talk through them. This is actually an image taken of me by my sister, but on the Retzoflex. So this would be circa 1979-1980. And this is my sister in the background here. And this was at Oswington in Dorset, where um, Constable took his honeymoon of all places. The this was of a film crew down at Morton, a small village, doing a comedy which was called Private Salt, and they were there over one summer. The location for the film Tenko was just up the road as well. We had a spate of BBC crews in the village, which was great fun. Now, this is a portrait of my grandmother. Again, this was taken about 1980 with the same camera, with the Rexaflex. As you can see, it's really sharp. It's a really good camera for portraiture. And this would be at the... Um, for f4 end and again we've got a nice bouquet in the background as you can see it's a useful camera to use this was taken in bradwood upon avon at the same time and strangely enough this was taken on the day prince charles and diana spencer got engaged don't know how i remember these useless pieces of information but I have a fond memory of using the Retzo Flats. It's a camera I'm never going to, well, I'm not planning to part with. I've, and I've never seen another one. Thanks for watching. Bye.